Long before beets were cultivated for their roots, they grew wild as a leafy green in the sandy soil of the Mediterranean. Sea beet, or Beta vulgaris maritima, still grows along the salty marshes of the southern Mediterranean coast. In ancient times, Greeks and Romans cultivated the ancestor of modern beets in their gardens and used the roots only for medicine, often as a laxative. The Romans spread beets, which they called beta, into northern Europe. Near the end of his reign in the early 9th century, the Emperor Charlemagne ordered beets to be grown in imperial gardens of the Holy Roman Empire in Italy, Spain, and Germany. Throughout the Middle Ages, beetroot grew in the monastery gardens of France, Spain, and Italy. Still, until the early years of the Renaissance, eating beetroot was mainly for Epicureans and herbalists. After all, these roots were long and slender, nothing like the bulbous bright red roots that the word beet now typically brings to mind. In 1390, the Old English word bete, or bete rot, turns up in an English recipe. Looking at a variety of heirloom beet roots in England, it's likely that early breeders were selecting beets for their roots rather than their leaves. Many of these varieties can be traced to Germany and Eastern Europe as well, where beets were becoming an essential part of the diet since they grew and kept well in the cold climate. In 1558, Italian botanist Pietro Mattioli described beetroots in his Epistola de Bulba Castaneo. In 1600, French botanist Olivier de Serre mentions beetroot he got from Italy, writing that the strong red root, whose juice that it makes in cooking similar to a syrup of sugar, is very beautiful to see for its vermeil color. He also praised its nutritional value. The Crofodine might well be the oldest heirloom beet variety still in production and remains one of the best for its deep red, almost black color and its very dense, firm and sweet flesh. This excellent storage beet develops aromas of chestnut and rose and it's high in antioxidants. In some areas, it's still called by its original name oak bark beet, but its rough and cracked exterior resembling the skin of a crapaud, the French word for toad, inspired the name that's stuck for centuries. It was introduced to American gardeners in 1867 when J.H. Gregory included it on his list of new and rare vegetables in American Agriculturalist magazine. Gregory said it was esteemed by the French as the best of all beets for table use. The vigorous plants have a flat growing habit and produce many leaves. The leaf ribs are red, but the leaf limbs are green, demonstrating that there's no genetic link between leaf color and the intensity of the root's red color. The best French crocodine beets are grown in the shallow clay limestone soils of the haute saint region in western France, a terroir it shares with the famous brandy of cognac. Their vineyards are intertwined with small fields of beets. Direct seeding begins in mid-March and continues to mid-June. Thinning the plants is a labor-intensive and delicate task. The crop is sold fresh at markets from September to early December when the last harvest is sold steamed and is prized as the sweetest. Thanks so much for watching Seed Stories. We love bringing you the backstory on these amazing varieties. Be sure to click the subscribe button so you won't miss a single episode.